Good morning. I'm James. I am your U.S. racing expert for bettinggods.com. We're back again with another, another edition of the U.S. Racing Report. And we've got a total of nine races covered, six from Churchill Downs, uh, three from Aqueduct. Before I get into all of that, I want to I hope everyone had a nice Thanksgiving. If you're stateside, if you don't live in the United States, I hope you had a nice week. Uh, you bought a lot of nice gifts on Black Friday. You got good deals for your uh, your holiday shopping. Speaking of great deals, uh, there's no better deal than getting somebody a subscription to one of the services on bettinggods.com. Uh, for example, the bookie's enemy, he's got a, a lifetime profit of just shot, just north of 6,000 euros. His profit this month is uh, 680 euros. So a subscription to that service would make a great stocking stuffer for a friend or a coworker or a family member. U.S. racing expert would make a good <laughs> stocking stuffer as well. We've had a profitable September and October. Our November is a little shy of profitable right now, but it's going to come down to this weekend. Uh, we, we had a nice 10 to 1 shot on Friday. <clears throat> that was a shot in the arm. And we're coming out firing on Saturday and Sunday, so watch out. Let's get to some of the action now. Churchill Downs is what we're going to start with, and we're going right to race number one. Now, Churchill Downs is having their Stars of Tomorrow card. They have two of these cards in their fall meet. Their first one was October the 31st, and this is their second one. So it's uh, an entire day just devoted strictly to two-year-old races. Uh, pretty exciting stuff as we get to look at the Triple Crown contenders, hopefully next year for 2022. So like I said, we're going to start off with race number one at Churchill Downs. The horse I like here is named Love of My Life. Love of My Life is breaking from post number one. And uh, this is for trainer Ignacio Correas, not exactly a household name. It says here that his first time starters, he wins with at 6%. And stats like that, I think, are going to keep a lot of betters off this horse unless the word is out or something. Um, first, I want to get into the first thing I like about this runner is that the breeding practical joke as a sire has done a marvelous job so far. This is a first year sire. He's had 55 runners, 13 of one so far. Seven of them are, have run second. That's a 23% win percentage, which... You don't really see numbers that high um, for sires. So Practical Joke's doing a great job. That's the first thing I like about this runner. Second thing, I mentioned trainer Ignacio Correas' numbers, 6% with first-time starters. But when you boil it down to first-time starters on dirt, in sprint races, he wins at 18%. And he's in the money at nearly 50% of the time. So at 8-1 to one odds, I think it's worth taking a shot on Love of My Life, race number one at Churchill Downs. Let's, we're going to skip all the way to race number five. I don't like races two, three, or four. Um, just to give you an idea, the races are great, but they're just really head scratchers, and I don't want to guide anybody the wrong way or just start guessing. Um, but one horse I do like in race number five is named Magazine Street. Now, I like this horse based on the replay that I saw. The, the speed figure is a little bit lower than some of the other runners in here, but um, breeding-wise, I think Magazine Street uh, is bred to be better than he ran first time out. He was favored first time out at odds of just under three to one. But Magazine Street is out of, uh, he's by Gunrunner, who is trained by Steve Asmussen uh, for this same owner group. And he was out of, uh, this runner's out of rem the damn remit. So that makes him a uh, half to finite. Finite also, it was a multiple grade stakes runner for these connections, grade stakes winner for these connections. Trainer Steve Asmussen's winning at a 28% rate. He's turned it back on. I think on Thanksgiving Day, he had like five or six winners here at Churchill Downs. Here's what I was getting at. The runner Finite, uh, that's his half-sister. Uh, multiple graded stakes winners, grade ones all, all across the board. So this one's bred to go longer. I like the replay. I like the way he was starting out. I think he'll get better with distance with the tappet on the bottom side. So Magazine Street for us in race number five. Race number seven is a mile and a 16th allowance race for two-year-old fillies. The horse I like here is named Boma. This is another one I like based on the replays. If you look at the running lines, it says four path, upper bid gaining. That does not tell the whole story. Uh, Boma was behind horses. She had to switch out. Uh, she came with a nice close at the end. And for a two-year-old to get that kind of experience, I think um, does wonders for them. Uh, some of the others in here had easy leads last time out, and this one had that experience where she can. She's been behind horses, and she switched out. She knows what to do, uh, and she looked athletic doing it. She changed leads and everything. Boma for us, uh, it's a three to one. 
in that race. Uh, we're going to go to race number nine. This is the six and a half furlong Lively Shively Stakes for two year old Colts. There's a horse in this race that's probably going to be an odds on favorite, but that one uh, is a little bit pace dependent in a race that doesn't have a ton of pace in it. Uh, Hoist the Gold has a 111 time form early pace figure, and I think might, might get away to an easy lead. Trainer Dallas Stewart is winning at 18% at the meet. Uh, he does well with Brian Hernandez. Hoist the Gold, they stretched out to a mile last time. I think it might have been a little bit too far. Um, the races that this one's run, like he's faced Cyber Knife, he's faced Jack Christopher, some pretty tough horses there. So hoist the gold to the lead, wire to wire for us in race number nine at odds of five to one. Let's move to race number 10. This is our first graded stakes race of the day. And this is my best bet of the day as well. Sandstone in the grade two golden rod. It's for two old fillies. Our favorite, our likely favorite is going to break towards the rail. And her name is Famed. Famed is a half to essential quality. The Travers winner, the Belmont winner, uh, essential quality. Uh, great horse, but famed, we had her last time as our best bet that day. Uh, and she won off, but she didn't change leads in the stretch. I didn't like the way she strode out. If she, if she runs the same way, I think Sandstone is going to give her a lot of trouble. Sandstone, uh, last time out, faced Yugiri and blew the doors off that runner. Uh, so Sandstone, if she can run anything close to last race, is going to be going to give them all they can handle in this race. So Sandstone for us in the Golden Rod. As we move to the next great stakes race, this is uh, the last race we're covering at Churchill Downs, and it's my favorite race of the day. It's a little bit, as you go through the runners, um, you see a lot of horses that you could be excited about as we hit the Derby Trail next year. The horse I'm siding with is White Abario at odds of 8-1 to one for trainer Safi Joseph. Safi Joseph is not exactly known for winning races at Churchill Downs, uh, let alone graded stakes races at Churchill Downs. But White Abario has won his races with speed figures uh, as high as 81, which you see the rest of these runners haven't come that close yet, not even close. White Abario did that last time. He drew off when asked, really under very light urging at odds on favoritism. Um, that day, if you take a look at the pace, 25, and he finished up in 136 and three. If we kind of piece that out and incrementally, we see it was a slow early pace and he closed in. So he's got, even though he was on the lead, he had the best closing figure in the field for that, uh, for that day. So I like White Abario for that reason. It's hard to get a two-year-old to learn how to close or to, to run those late pace figures. I definitely like that. If you look at some of these other ones, where, whereas White Abario closed in 23.63 for a mile as a final fraction, we look at some of these other runners. Rich Strike closed in 26.18. Texas Red Hot 26.11. So you get the picture. White Abario for us in the... Uh, Kentucky Jockey Club. Let's move on to Aqueduct. We've got three races. Uh, race number four, starter allowance and a mile for three-year-olds and up. Favoritism is likely to go to the eight horse, No Burn, off a 10-length score. But No Burn didn't beat anybody that day, and he was claimed out of the race. Uh, he was the odds-on favorite there. I think he's going to have a little more competition here, and I really like Mr. Briggs to his inside. I think Mr. Briggs is the speed of this field, and I think he could prove tough to run down. This one was also claimed last time out for a trainer that wins 22% of the time first off the claim. Uh, if Mr. Briggs gets the lead early, he could be tough to run down. And I like, I like odds of eight to one on this one. Uh, two races left to cover. The Discovery is the next one. This is a race for three-year-olds at a mile and an eighth. And uh, Speaker's Corner is going to take all the attention. He's probably going to be an odds-on favorite here. I was looking for ways to beat him. And here's the stance I'm taking. Take a look at the races. Speaker's Corner is run with Lasix. We see this and this. The L is the Lasix, and those were his two best starts. If we cross out, he's not going to have Lasix on Saturday, so we cross those races out because he's not going to have Lasix. We see that his highest speed figure he's put up has been an 80. An 80 is not going to get it done here, not even close. And as an odds-on favorite for a trainer who's over 18, we're going to take a stand against a speaker's corner here, and I'm going to go with Vindictive. Uh, Vindictive is a runner from Todd Pletcher's barn, who's winning at a rate of 25%. Luis Saez is one of the best riders in the nation. Um, and Vindictive has already 
one at the distance twice. He's the only runner in the field that's two for two at the distance. Uh, Vindictive has been working well. When you watch the replays of this horse, he's he's running with his neck stretched out like he wants to win. He, he's looking for the wire. He's looking to beat you. I like that. I like that quality in a horse. This is a half to stop charging Maria. Or sh- sorry, stop shopping Maria. Um, so because of the connections, because of the way this horse runs, uh, uh, because he's already proven at this proven it at the distance, it's vindictive for us in odds of eight to one in the discovery. The last race of the day is the grade three Long Island handicap. Uh, it's a mile and a half. And here I like, like Harajuku, another eight to one shot. It's our third eight to one shot at Aqueduct. If you take a look at Harajuku's form, um, back in France, uh, she was running time form figures, 106, 101, 108. Those are the kind of numbers that would win this race. Uh, first time out in the States, she ran a credible third in the, the Jockey Club Oaks Invitational. She finished behind Shanta Sara, and I'll get to that in a second. Last time out, uh, her speed figure dropped a little bit, but they cut her back in distance. She faced a tough field that day, and she's used to running longer distances. I think she's more effective running longer distances. If you take a look at the race, again, that she ran, the Jack and Club Oaks Invitational, she ran to Shanta Sara, uh, who subsequently blasted the field in the QE2 Cup, a grade one race. She went off by five lengths. So I think that legitimized the Jack and Club Oaks Invitational, where Harajuku ran third. And at odds of eight to one, we're going to take a shot with Harajuku. That wraps us up for this edition of the U.S. Racing Report. As always, I want to thank you for tuning in and listening. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Gods Tipster. Uh, feel free to comment on the YouTube video below. We're looking to close out November with a bang. Let's make some money this weekend. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.